Hi, my name is Samer Hijazi. I am a senior architect at Cadence IP Group. Today I'll be talking about a very interesting topic, which is automatic speech recognition, uh, commonly known as ASR. ASR has been with us in the industry for a long time, decades. However, only in the past few years, it started becoming capable to the point it can be deployed in mass devices. When I say capable, there is a very specific performance characteristic, which is word error rate, that have significantly improved in the past few years, thanks to the adoption of a new powerful, powerful technology uh, known as deep learning. And as a result of the adoption of this technology and a significant improvement in word error rate, we see new devices coming in our daily life that is using SR uh, regularly, such as Siri on Apple products and OK Google, not to forget uh, Amazon Echo, as well as uh, Google's Home Assistant. However, these devices only represent the tip of the iceberg. And the adoption of ASR in pretty much every consumer device as a human machine interface is just waiting to happen for a technical uh, gate that we are going to discuss today, which is the fact that ASR today, as we know it, is really implemented for the most part on the cloud side. So the edge device that we know and love is, is only acting as a recording device and a transmission device. And the conversion of the acoustic signal to a human speech or to a, to a, to a text is done on the cloud. And then the conversion of that text into a meaning and acting on it, on it is also done on the cloud. What's the consequence of that is a significant power consumption for transmitting this signal, a bandwidth congestion on the infrastructure side, and latency. So for instance, I wouldn't want my machine saw to wait for my stop order to be connected to the internet and act on it. By that, my, I would have lost my hand or my leg. So what's SASR? What are the components of that uh, that would make that all happen? There are three components of ASR that commonly implemented. These are very basic blocks. Here is called pre-processing, acoustic model, and language model. So the culmination of the three, we get a stream coming from a microphone. So pardon me if this doesn't look good to you. But it's what I represent a microphone. And we get here samples at sampling rate between 22, some max uh, to 16 kilohertz, 30 kilo samples per second, all the way to 8 as a narrow band. And we get out of here is words and sentences, as humans usually speak, the, uh, pronounce them. So let's zoom on each block by itself. Uh, Pre-processing. And pre-processing in here, we are trying to do what we have learned in the past few decades about how to enhance and magnify the characteristics and the features that exist in the human speech. Specifically, one of the well-known uh, things about human speech, although it has a very wide range in the frequency domain ranging from around 100 hertz, all the way to around 20 kilohertz, the vast majority, and I, this is not to scale, the vast majority of the energy is in the range from 100 hertz to 400 hertz only. So adapting the entire band to represent and magnify the importance of the low band while keeping the high frequency bands is commonly known as the mill frequency components or mill frequency bands. And this process is really being adopted and implemented inside the pre-processing. Now, the output over here is what I call it an enhanced features, enhanced, enhanced acoustic features. Now, this enhanced acoustic features get picked up by the second block, acoustic model. Acoustic model is by far 
probably the block responsible for all the improvement in the past few years. Because inside this block, two new, two technologies have been adopted, which are CNN and RNN. And they together are responsible for, all, for most of the improvement that happened on the word error rate in the entire chain. I'm not going to go in details about these two, as they have been covered in previous Cadence uh, Whiteboard Wednesday and will be covered in future ones as well. In short, this acoustic model take the enhanced features from the input and produce a sequence of probability of the abstract component of the human speech. What are these abstract components? Are phonemes and characters. So I repeat, the acoustic model using advanced machine learning techniques take the enhanced feature as being presented by the uh, pre-processing and produce a sequence of probabilities, P1, P2, P3, all the way, of the primary abstract component of the human speech that is phonemes and characters. Okay, that's good, but still we, had, we don't have words. So who's going to take these probabilities and provide me words? Not, uh, well, as expected, it will be the language model. So what is the language model? It's just a, rule, a book of rules and uh, conditions on what a human could say. So given the sequence of probabilities of the characters that existed in the speech, what could this person have said? What are the words? And these probabilities is derived from uh, the corpus of human speech such as, such as the Wall Street Journal, Journal or the works of Shakespeare. And that's how we end up with the ultimate output of the entire ASR module, which are words and sentences. Okay. Luckily, in Cadence, we have in, uh, in the IP team a family of products, namely Hi-Fi family, that would enable someone to take these three modules and put them on an embedded device and perform the entire ASR functionality in an embedded, embedded fashion. Uh, the contents of these uh, processors and how can they support ASR is going to be the topic of future Whiteboard Wednesday. So please stay tuned and look to have you next week. Thank you.